What's up, T people? This is Denny. And this is James from TDB bringing you episode number 220. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have some ripe pour that was sent to us by Ryan. So thank you very much, Ryan. This is a blind test, so to speak. Like Den- neither Denny nor yeah. I have had this tea. Yep. It's made by uh, Hai Long Hao, sold by Yunnan Sourcing. Uh, it's the Jin Hai Long. It's a ripe pour uh, pressed in 2006. Um, and that literally just means gold high long. Um, so that's what the tea is. Uh, and so I figured it would be a good idea to have Denny and I try this together because Denny is a frequent drinker of ripe pour, mm-hmm. pulling out some hairs there. Indeed. Look at the color on this though. Really nice. There's like a lot of different, um, but it's not, yeah, it's not, there's a fair amount of color difference within the leaves. So interesting to see. Out here. So Ryan was kind enough to send us a nice little chunk. Thank you, sir. So we are uh, going to have at it. Yeah. I'm going to give us a rinse, and I'm not even going to fill the um, the brewing vessel all the way up to do the rinse. It's not really necessary, per se. If I did fill it all the way up, it would heat up a little bit more of the brewing vessel. It would be less water to use. Um, right. But as you guys can see, sort of like our cups... They're smaller, so even if Denny filled up the brewing vessel the whole way, it'd be sort of three cups worth or something like that. So a little bit too much. Okay, so that's not... Well, it is just the rinse, so we'll see what color the actual thing is, but it's not as dark as I would have guessed. No, um, pretty clear. A little bit of some... So pretty, pretty nice color, red. Smells like a ripe, that's for sure. Indeed. You know, I always struggle. I just released it in between a soda and ripe pour, mm. and about like half of my description was like, I don't know how to describe ripe pour. Yeah. So I think there's less variety in ripe than there is in ripe. Yeah. So I think that there's just more nuance to be found in, and not necessarily nuance, but there's a larger palette of flavors to be found in ripe pour. Yeah, that's definitely true, especially if mm. we're talking about like young to old sort of profiles. Exactly. Um, so this is looking like it is uh, probably definitely not stored in a super humid climate, so pretty dry stored, pretty clean. It's looking actually really nice. Doing a high pour here so it cools down a fair amount. Yep. So. Uh, not a super dark color, not so yet. we're not going to get that sort of like, I don't know, super, I wouldn't expect to get sort of like that really creamy, rich, ripe profile, mm. but we'll see. Yeah. The viscosity might be, yeah, might be an indication of the viscosity or not. Um, we'll find out. We're using seven grams here for, looks like this is 120 140. 140 yeah. milliliter. So I get a little bit more of those fruit, uh, those sort of ripe fruit, uh, ripe poor fruit flavors off mm-hmm. of this uh, just from the nose. Yeah, it's not as roasty um, or grassy um, or kind of mineral, dry pine needly. It's more of a, yeah, I agree, more of a fruity smell going on here. Give it a taste. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Salute. Thanks, Ryan. This cup is very full. Mm. I'm trying hard not to spill. Mm. Sort of a graininess to it. It's sweet. It has a very strong oatmeal flavor. Mm. Yeah, that's what I get from it, too. But it's not chocolatey, you know, you kind of taste those oatmeal flavors and you sort of, I kind of get them paired with like, you know, you have a stout sort of like chocolatey, espresso, creamy oatmeal. This has like that creaminess of the oatmeal and then kind of some like softer sweet flavors. It's actually really nice. Hmm. Do you think that oatiness is sort of like, if we had mm. tasted this tea right when it was pressed, do you think it would have had that same sort of profile or do you think that's something that comes through age? That's a good question. I don't really know. <laughs> It's definitely because it has a sort of sweetness that yeah I don't know that's a good question because I'm thinking about it now like I don't I don't really remember older well this is actually pretty old too huh about ten years yeah the material is old at least yeah I don't know I mean I like for me the storage is 
presumably stored in Kunming. I don't know if I would be able to say like, oh, this is exactly 10 years old. I might be, to me, it could be anywhere from a few years old to 15 years old. Yeah, it doesn't like taste that. like it's just been pressed. And here's the, you know, yeah, there's some stuff, there's some age on this for sure. It has a nice little bit of a lingering, I wouldn't call it mm, bitter, but... <clears throat> You know, kind of those are cacao nibs. Yeah. <clears throat> I'd say it's pretty um, active, actually, mm. for a taste. It's not, like, super mellowed out and soft or, mm. and it's smooth. It's color. It's pretty active for a ripe pour, I would say. So it's getting a little bit darker. Denny filled it a little bit less full, I noticed, on you this steep. Right. So uh, we'll probably get a little bit stronger brew. Um, do you get any of those sort of, like... Um, cherry vibes off of this right pour. Yeah, it has that sort of strong initial flavor um, on the smell, but I'm not tasting it that much on the cup. <clears throat> it, it's not coming off as particularly fruity, I'd say. Um, that's kind of more of a mid-tone kind of balance. It's not super crisp. It's not super heavy. Right. It's kind of in the middle of those two. But uh, really tasty. It's a little more viscous this time for sure. We'll see how it tastes. Taste differs at all. Oops. Making a mess. That's why we got the tea towels. Indeed. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. <clears throat> <laughs> much stronger. Quite quite different. A little bit much of more viscous. Tartness in Absolutely. This, which is Mm. That's, I feel so you drink more ripe pour mm -hmm. so you could speak to this better I feel like that's unusual in ripe pour to get sort of like this little bit of tartness to it well I think that usually when you get that flavor of tartness it comes at the cost of the tea being extremely overwhelming which this tea isn't no it's not yeah so um, I've done that but I usually get it from over brewing and I don't think that we are doing that in this case. No, um, I don't. So, I don't know. Yeah. I think I'd, it's more uncommon. I'd also say the aftertaste is pretty strong mm -hmm. um, for a tea uh, of this. This one looks more similar to the first brew. Yeah. Those first two brews were really quite different uh, from one another. I'm using more water and just f as quickly as possible. So, this one is a little bit less um, saturated in the color of it. It might be a little bit less tart, um, but... It doesn't though, it's not, so I get the tartness, it's almost though more of a a taste physical description as opposed to, we've had some raws that are, that, that sort of like tart, unripened cherry tomato flavor, you know, um, or some of them we've had um, are very uh, um, kind of lemony and sour, and this isn't that the tartness almost is a texture as opposed to a flavor, interestingly enough. So mm. when I say texture, I mean sort of like a physical experience, like the, the, the feeling of your mouth reacting to something that is tart without, per se, the flavor of it being tart, if that makes sense. That's more of my experience um, with it. We'll see how this this uh, steeping goes, though, because mm -hmm. we're using a lot more water per you know volume. Right, so we'd expect it to be a little bit less strong than that last one. Yeah. I actually enjoyed that last deep. I enjoyed the tartness, and it eventually sort of became sort of like a sweet filling on my mouth. Mm. So this is back to sweeter. Let's, let's see if we can oscillate between these two. So, because the tartar one that we had, I probably only added maybe this much. Maybe halfway. Of the, yeah. And that's because we, as you can see here, have basically a full cup left over that I kind of will probably just dump for the show. Right. Normally we'd be drinking that. I get, uh, for this steep, I definitely agree it's more similar to the first. I get some of those mm. cocoa uh, type flavors coming yeah, off of it. That. This is a solid right. It's really tasty. I feel like this has really become very balanced too over yeah. time. Nice and complex too. Yeah. Interesting enough. <clears throat> so this was, you know, is this going to pass the mom test? That's the question. Whew, I don't know. How yeah. do you feel? Well, first question. How do you feel in general about ripe poor passing the mom test? I was thinking that. I don't know. Um, and excuse me for my sniffles, everyone. Allergies are getting me. I don't really know. Um, 
I think Puer in general is kind of <laughs> can be a hit or miss for some people. And, Rob Puer especially though. Yeah, absolutely. And Puer in general, but I'd say Ripe's gonna be more amenable, older, better. Um if they can get down with if they're down with sort of like the bitterness of coffee, I think they would might enjoy uh ripe. Raw, it's really kind of up to I'd put that more in like the category of if you're an adventurous eater, you're probably gonna enjoy this a lot. I feel like raw pour <clears throat> also is something that rewards the uh drinker who invests uh time and like is like, okay, I may not get this immediately, I'm gonna keep trying it for 15, 20 times, yeah. and then you sort of can acquire the taste, so to speak, just because it can be a little bit, like Danny said earlier, Rob Poor is a vast category, so yeah. you can really have a lot of different profiles, but uh, it can be a little bit foreign uh, to the Western palate, I'd say. Yeah, that's, so, that's right. And Rob Poor, I'd say, is also foreign, but there's a smoothness and a sweetness to it that I think is a little bit easier um, to acquire. It's a little bit more narrow as far as the different sorts of flavors that you can get too. Totally. Uh, so I'm reheating the water. Yeah. So use a little bit less. Let's see how this goes. Back to your original question of the mom test. I would say, as far as ripe pour goes, this would probably be in the middle of the spectrum of it. Like, if you think your mom would like ripe pour, then she would probably like this tea. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I agree with that. Absolutely. So, this does look like a lot, like a, it's gonna be stronger. The color looks more like that set, sort of second steeping that we just did. Yeah. Um, and how did you accomplish this? Did you reheated the water and yep. did you filled to less of the vessel? Exactly. Okay. Yep. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It has that odiness again. Yeah, it's sort exactly. of actually. I'd almost say that this is a mix between the the two different profiles mm. that we've gotten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. This is this is a pretty good, very dynamic, as James was just saying. Um, yeah, this tea is changing a lot between the steepings based on the parameters that we're using. Kind of unusual for a ripe. Yeah, yeah, I think so yeah. too. Yeah, I mean. You're not going to get as much evolution of the ripe. It's going to be more consistent, though. You're going to kind of get... It's sort of more of the... Uh, what you see is what you get kind of a tea. Um, in a good way. And uh, But this tea is pretty dynamic. Uh, pretty tasty. Yeah. I, like, I like the odiness of it, too, as a complementary flavor to the sort of, you know, kind of traditional ripe mm. uh, flavors. It does add that sort of creaminess that is quite nice. Not getting a lot of fruit. I get a tiny little bit of that cherry yeah like i get a little bit of that sort of like combined with like the sour tartness to it a little bit of that not as much as steep number two mm-hmm. um but yeah i'm i'm uh i'm enjoying the tea i think it's a uh, fun ripe to have mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so again we're playing we're playing with the parameters of heat and basically tea per volume and so we're decreasing the volume of the amount of liquid that we use which is essentially increasing the amount of tea per milliliter of water used and just increasing the heat. And um, yeah, play around with these ripes. I'm surprised. Um, this would probably perform very differently in a Gaiwan. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. I mean, it just shows you, um, like, I feel like ripe in general is a little bit more consistent to raw. Uh, it's a little bit harder to miss, uh, to brew poorly. Um, but this shows that, you know, these rules can be broken. These teas definitely can change uh, depending on how you steep it. Um, so, uh, yeah, enjoying this tea. Yeah. Thanks uh, very much, Ryan. Really appreciate it. Um, for you folks out there who do want to get in touch with us, like Ryan, um, to send some tea in for us to try. First off, thank you to everyone, including Ryan, who has done so already. It's been a real treat. We've been able to drink some tea that we definitely wouldn't have had access to yep. otherwise. Um, but you can do that with, uh, email T E A D B O R G at gmail.com, probably the best way to get in touch with us directly yep. about um, that sort of a thing. Absolutely. And this tea is also available on Unon Sourcing. Yeah. I think it sells for $50, $60, something like that, uh, which it's a great is value. reasonable for a ripe that is now 11 years old. Yeah. I so. think it's a totally, a, I would I'd say go grab this from Scott's website. This is a definite pickup. Um, it's tasty, it's consistent. This, this dynamics is a lot going on in this this ripe really yummy um, and good value. It's a lot of tea. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, really. buy a cake, drink through it in a few months, and comment in the comment section below. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, for folks out there who have yet to um, um, go through the extremely large catalog of TDB episodes, James, what should they do? Yeah. First off, we have a playlist uh, now. Yeah, check out the playlist, depending <clears throat> on what you're interested in. Mm-hmm. We may have a playlist for that. If you are sick of listening to me, there's in between episodes with Denny. There are different uh, categories of poor. So if you're interested in ripe poor, if you're interested in raw poor, if you're interested in factory poor, there are playlists for that. So you can sort of review, go through our topic a little bit more topically um, rather than just like clicking next each time. Uh, because at this point, there are uh, probably almost 400 videos. So that's, that's a, lot a lot of content. Uh, Alternatively, you could do that. Uh, you could set aside your weekend, uh, yeah. and you could just marathon TDB. I don't personally suggest it, but you could. Um, yeah, and check us out at tdb.org. Lots of content there at this point, too. Lots of different articles, uh, especially on poor. So check those out. And uh, anything, any last words, Denny? Subscribe. Text your mom. Tell her to subscribe. <laughs> there we you love go. all you guys, gals, and moms out there. Dads, get out! Yeah. Get out, dads! GTFO. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll see you guys uh, next time on episode 221, where we're going to be drinking some dank poo. <laughs>